proudly we hail. Hello from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. This is C.P. McGregor speaking and welcoming you to another in a series of broadcasts presented by your War Department titled, Proudly We Hail. Through the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, we present as the star, Mr. Michael O'Shea, in our play, The Spindrift Lady, an original story by Paula Sheldon with music by Eddie Scrivanek. There's a saying that anything can happen at sea. The cruiser yacht Spindrift Lady, owned and skippered by the fabulously rich Rick Silwyn, was two days out of Honolulu when this story opens. Those, uh, those papers must be pretty stale, Val. No, oh, I'm only reading the headlines. You remember Lucy Bradshaw, Rick? Mm-hmm. Well, jewel thieves stole her famous pearls. That's exciting news for a waiting world, isn't it? Don't be sarcastic, darling. Here's an item that should interest you. Grand Duchess Anastasia traveling incognito disappears from New York Hotel. Grand Duchess Anastasia. Never heard of her. Uh, where's the market page? Oh, Rick. Here I have you to myself and all you think about are stocks. I might as well give up. <laughs> give up what? Trying to marry you, stupid. Why do you suppose I trail along on those endless cruises if it's not for love? Why, I, I thought you wanted to see the world. Sometimes you simply infuriate me. You're either a confirmed bachelor or an incurable idealist, or both. Well, uh, let's just say I've hitched my wagon to a star. Hmm. And now I suppose you're waiting for some fairy princess to come to you from behind a cloud. Well, uh, that might be a nice surprise. Huh? Oh, Captain Selwyn, sir. Hmm? Can you come up to the radio shack? There's an important message coming over in code. Oh, I'll be right with you, Spox. Will you excuse me, Val? <laughs> It's to all ships' masters, sir. Oh, let's have it. Warning. Civilian seaplane containing two escapees, leper station Molokai at large. Description number one, male, first stages infection. <laughs> number two, female, not infected, but possible carrier. Cooperate Government Health Bureau Isolation Station, Molokai. Signed, Edwards. That's all, sir. Uh-huh. Okay, I'll keep the message, Sparks. Thanks for calling me. Aye, aye, sir. Was it anything important, Rick? Well, not in particular. At least it doesn't concern us. Now, what's the matter, Val? What are you looking at out there? Maybe I'm seeing things, but isn't that something floating out there? Look, right where I'm pointing. Where? Oh. Yes. Yes, I see it now. Mr. Jensen, sight your glasses on the starboard bow. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, there's a seaplane down, sir. She's very low in the water. Bring up all ahead full and we'll go alongside. Aye, aye, sir. Give her a hail, Rick. Maybe they haven't seen us. All right. Ahoy there, seaplane. We're going to pick you up. No answer. She's probably abandoned. No. Look, there's a woman crawling out of the cockpit. Uh-huh. You're right. Number one lifeboat crew, man your boat. Careful now, lower away. Okay, men, shove off. Steady, you know. Easy, does it? Here, give me your hand, miss. Can you make it? Yes. I think I can. That's right. Now, sit down you get your breath. Oh, I'm a little dizzy. Oh, you'll be all right. I'm, uh, I'm Captain Selwyn, and this is the Spindrift Lady bound for San Francisco. My name's Rosto. Anya Rosto. The man you brought aboard is my uncle, Colonel Samuyov. He's badly hurt. It's probably a concussion. Uh, how long were you afloat? About two days, I think. Unless I've lost count. Well, we should be in San Francisco in a week. I'll, I'll have to wire the authorities we picked you up, though. 
the authorities. Yes, uh, unless I'm mistaken, Miss Rostow, you, uh, you left the government airport without a permit. That's true. We had no visa. But how did you know these, Captain Selwyn? Well, you see, there was a broadcast sent to all ship's masters to watch out for you. By a coincidence, we received it just before we saw your plane. No one knew it. As soon as your escape was discovered, a warning was sent out. Here's the message if you'd like to see it. Escape is Molokai. This is preposterous, Captain Selwyn. Do you think I'm this woman? This fugitive from a leper colony? Aren't you, Miss Rostow? Oh. oh, please. Please. Now, now, Miss Rostow, control yourself. You're getting hysterical. Just my nerve. I can't stand anymore. Uh, quick, somebody, get the smelling salts. She's fainted. We pause briefly from our story, The Spindrift Lady, starring Michael O'Shea, to bring you an important message from your War Department. Here is a question based on American history. Who organized the first weather bureau in this country? The answer, like the answer to so many questions concerning progress and development in this country, is the Army. Yes, Army meteorological records from 1819 to 1860 laid the foundations for scientific weather forecasting. In 1891, a Civil Weather Bureau was established under the Department of Agriculture. This is but one of the fields in which our Army has played a prominent part in the development of our country. Today, the new regular Army is engaged in a program of vital research pioneering new fields of science. Army technicians are making great strides in scientific achievement. And don't forget, the Education Clause of the GI Bill still holds good. Any man who serves 90 days or more before the official termination of the war is entitled to at least one year of free education. For further information, go to your nearest Army recruiting station. Act two of our story, The Spindrift Lady, starring Michael O'Shea as Rick Selwyn. A week has passed and the witchery of the silvery moon and tropic sea has cast its spell on the skipper of the Spindrift Lady. Oh, is that you, Captain Selwyn? You're out late tonight, sir. Yes, I couldn't sleep. Well, uh, what's our position, Mr. Jensen? Why, the Farallone light bears dead on our port bow, sir. Uh-huh. I think we'd better lay to till daylight so we can make the gate on the flood tide. Aye, aye, sir. Hey, wait a minute. Isn't that someone standing by the bow rail? Well, oh, yes, sir. It's the uh, lady passenger from the plane, sir. She comes on deck every evening about this time. Oh, I see. Well, good night, and have me call at daybreak. Aye, aye, sir. Miss Rostow? Yes, Captain Selwyn? Miss Rostow, I'm, I'm glad you came on deck. I've been wanting to talk to you. You see, tomorrow the quarantine officers come aboard, and, well, I wondered if there was anything I can do to help you. Nothing, thank you. Yeah, but you know what it means. They'll return you to the island. Now, I have some influence. You're very kind. But I shall never go to Molokai. I wish with all my heart you'd escaped. We can never escape our destiny, it seems. I've had many burdens, great responsibilities. It was cowardly of me to run away. Yeah, but you're too young. You're too beautiful for such a martyrdom. There must be something I can do. Don't worry, Captain Selwyn. There's nothing anyone can do. Someday, perhaps you'll understand. I only understand one thing. All my life, I've waited for someone like you. There are many things you don't understand. I'm not free. Not free? You, you mean there's someone else? No, no, not a person. It's a duty. I do not belong to myself. Well, well, then couldn't you belong to me? That's the answer, Anya. Now, if you're my wife, I could protect you, care for you. Oh, don't you see, Anya, what I'm trying to say is, I love you. Boy, the spindrift lady. I 
pilot coming aboard. Stand by to take on pilot. Now, don't be nervous, darling. This will soon be over. Those men. Who are they, Rick? They're probably the quarantine officers. Captain Selwyn? I'm Captain Selwyn. I'm Schaefer, United States Secret Service. How do you do? How are you? Uh, we well, got your short wave, Captain. We'd uh, like to interview the passengers from the plane. I uh, certainly. This is Miss Rosto. Our uncle is in his cabin below. He's had a bad head injury. Uh. Miss Rosto, why did you and the Baron take such an informal leave of America? You had us pretty badly worried. Worried? I do not understand. Well, when a visiting duchess disappears while a guest of this country, it puts our government in a bad spot. I'm sorry. It was only that I wished to lose myself. My grandfather's very ill. I was afraid of having to assume the cares of state. Ah, I, I see. Then you uh, didn't want to no, be... No, no, I've never even had the chance to be a woman. I... Well, you needn't worry any longer. You're country is now a democracy. Uh, uh, just a minute, uh, Duchess. Anya, what does this all mean? Look, I radioed that we were bringing in the escapees from Molokai. Oh, they were picked up four days ago in Mexico. We uh, traced the Duchess to Honolulu, and you know what happened after that. Mm -hmm. Well, Miss Rostow, my respects. We can report that you're safe, and uh, it's obvious that you're in good hands. Thank you, Captain Selwyn, for your cooperation. Goodbye. 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 Now you understand, Rick, why I was not free. Can you forgive me for deceiving you? Duchess, I can forgive you for anything. Uh, Anya, darling, will you marry me and be my queen for life? Not your queen ring. Just let me be your spendthrift lady. <laughs> This is C.P. McGregor speaking. I hope you've enjoyed our Proudly We Hail story starring Michael O'Shea. Before leaving you, Don Forbes has an important message for all of us. A few years ago, H.G. Wells published a novel, The Shape of Things to Come. In the book, he described amazing new developments in transportation, communication, and energy, developments that no one expected to see in our lifetime. The United States Army scientists and technicians have made many of these predictions a reality. They have proved that Mr. Wells' book is not so fanciful as at first thought. The Army is carrying on research and experimentation on a previously unprecedented scale. Atomic, supersonics, medicine, construction, radar, television, transportation, communication are just some of the fields of this work. In a joint project with the National Geographic Society, Army technicians are in the midst of a thorough study of cosmic rays. Through the use of rockets, recording instruments have provided data at altitudes of over 100 miles in the air. Imagine a plane flying at 1,500 miles per hour at an altitude of 15 miles. The outside temperature is 67 degrees below zero. But inside, refrigeration is required to bring the temperature from 400 degrees oven heat to normal room temperature. Air Force technicians are working on such a plane. This is one of the problems they're solving reducing the extreme high temperature generated by skin friction at such tremendous speeds. These are but a couple of the accomplishments that are making former scientific wonders commonplace today. In peacetime, as in wartime, the regular army is making invaluable contributions to science and modern progress. Any intelligent, physically fit young man between 17 and 34 may enlist for three years in the new regular army. Go to your local army recruiting officer and talk it over with him. You'll be glad to explain more fully the advantages of a three-year enlistment in the regular army for you. Thank you, Michael O'Shea, for appearing on this program. Proudly, we hail will come to you again over this station next week. Listen in.